All right, thank you. I want to talk a little bit about uh, where we've chosen uh, to fly the helicopter. Uh, immediately after the rover landed on February 18th, uh, just within a couple of hours, we started to search for a good place to drop off the helicopter. And when I say good place, uh, what I mean specifically is we wanted to find something that we call an airfield, which is an area where it is safe for the helicopter to take off and also safe for the helicopter to land again after a flight. So that area naturally needs to be flat and it needs to have few obstacles, rocks and the like, that could pose a danger to the helicopter on landing. And that area should also be situated within a larger flight zone. So the flight zone is where the flights themselves will happen. And we're also looking for something relatively flat there. And we're looking for something that has enough texture. Uh, that means things that the helicopter can look at with its cameras while it's flying in order to keep track of where it's at. So we began to look for an airfield and a surrounding flight zone uh, first using satellite imagery. And then as it became available, images taken by the rover itself uh, after it landed. And we began to realize that we might just have a really great uh, airfield right in front of our noses. In fact, we have a satellite uh, image, if we can pull that up, uh, that shows where the rover landed as well as the flight zone and the airfield. And you can see it's just right north of where we landed. And once the rover started driving, we were able to get even better images of this area. And we have a second image here that shows what the rover saw with its navigation cameras looking directly up the airfield uh, or up the flight zone with the airfield in the foreground. And using these images and other images, we really scoured this area. We looked at every little rock and pebble within that airfield and measured it before we finally were comfortable saying, yes, this is this is gonna be our home base for the helicopter. So what you're looking at there is in fact the first airfield on another planet, and we're planning to deploy the helicopter right in the middle of that. So next I wanna talk a little bit about our first flight and what that's gonna look like starting from this airfield that we've picked here. So first of all, the, the first flight is special. It's by far the most important flight that we plan to do. Uh, it'll be the first powered flight by an aircraft on another planet. And we've, in fact, met most of our goals for this project just by getting to the point where we are right now. And we'll declare complete mission success if we do this first flight that we're going to attempt. Now, the flight itself will consist of a takeoff and then a climb to an altitude of three meters. Uh, and then we will hover in place uh, for about 30 seconds and make a turn with the helicopter while we're hovering and then come down and land again. And we have an engineering simulation uh, here that shows what that flight might look like above the airfield that we have just chosen. Now when the helicopter goes to fly like this, a few hours ago it's already received instructions from us on Earth that describes exactly what that flight should look like the detailed trajectory that it's going to follow, how fast it's going to follow that trajectory, where and when it's going to turn, when it's gonna take picture, et cetera. So it knows, knows at that point exactly what we would like it to do. But it has to work very hard during the flight itself in order to make that happen. Uh, in particular, it takes images of the ground below it at a rate of 30 images per second and analyzes those in order to track the features on the ground to see how it is moving across the ground. And it combines that with other sensor measurements in order to make tiny adjustments to the controls 500 times per second to stay exactly on the trajectory that we prescribed for it and to fight off disturbances that try to take it away from that trajectory like winds and gusts. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Farah, who's 